On the 1st of November 2022, there was a report of a yacht that was so badly damaged by orcas that it sank. The crew were safely rescued by another boat in the area and all those shaken were unharmed. The yacht was sailing off the port of Viana do Costello, which is situated off the coast of Portugal. This is not the first time that orcas have damaged a boat in this area. An interaction in July this year also resulted in a boat sinking. The family of five on board had to abandon the boat into a dinghy and were rescued by a nearby fishing boat. These types of interactions with orcas were first reported in May of 2020. They have only occurred in these waters, with no other incidents ever having been reported in other parts of the world. No more incidents were reported until July of 2020, where various incidents occurred in the Strait of Gibraltar. The incidents then spread to the Portuguese coast and northern Spain. This increase in interactions and geographical dispersion prompted the formation of a working group to better understand the nature and scope of the interactions and to formulate mitigation strategies. The orcas are mainly targeting sailing boats with interactions lasting anywhere between less than half an hour and up to two hours. The average size of the boat is 12 meters and the boats were traveling anywhere between three and 10 knots. The way in which the orcas interacted with the boats varied, but they all approached the boat in a similar way and made physical contact with the rudder and or the hull of the boat. Their approach to the stern of the boat has been described as quick and stealthy, with the crew not realizing that they were there. They would go under the boat and make contact with it. In particular, they would push the rudder, causing it to turn, sometimes making the boat turn almost 360 degrees. The more the crew tried to control the wheel, the stronger the orcas pushed. Eventually, the orcas would lose interest and move away. The orcas have also been reported to be communicating with each other with very loud whistles, so loud that the crew had to shout to hear each other. It has been estimated that up to 15% of yachts experiencing and reporting these behaviours have had to be towed to port. The behaviour first began with a few specifically identified juveniles. The behaviour has now expanded to other juveniles and adults. So why are the orcas doing this? Some people think that the orcas are just having some fun. Others believe that vulnerable sailing boats are being targeted with serious and expensive consequences. People who know these animals think that it could be a sign that they are stressed. The orcas are not well treated in these waters and it has been reported that not long after two orcas had an interaction with a boat where they made contact with the rudder six times for five minutes, they were chased by 10 speedboats for an hour. The orcas of the Strait of Gibraltar are listed as critically endangered by the IUCN with only around 30 mature individuals left. They are a distinct subpopulation in the Northeast Atlantic and consist of five pods. The Strait of Gibraltar is a major shipping route and this, along with fishing activities and whale watching tours, make it an area with one of the highest human marine activities in the world. Cetaceans in this area are exposed to the constant threat of ship strikes and noise pollution. The waters are also heavily polluted, having one of the highest PCB concentrations in the world. So why then are the orcas there? Well, they arrive in the Gibraltar Strait and surrounding area in April to feed on bluefin tuna and leave in November to spend the winter in the Atlantic off the coast of southern Spain and Portugal and possibly Morocco. The tuna migrate through the Strait of Gibraltar during the spring to spawn in the Mediterranean and they come back through the Strait to the Atlantic in the summer months of July and August. To catch the tuna, the orcas employ a method called the endurance exhaustion technique. This is where they chase the tuna, sometimes for 30 minutes, beyond the tuna's aerobic limits and when they are exhausted it is easy for the orca to capture them. Local fishermen also like to catch tuna. When the tuna are entering the Mediterranean, they use a type of purse seine fishing. As the tuna leave the Mediterranean, they use a type of long line fishing. The bluefin tuna are listed as an endangered species by the IUCN and the fishermen have to stick to strict fishing quotas. So the fishermen and orcas are in competition for the tuna, which reportedly has not always gone well for the orca. Amazingly, since 1999, Two of the pods have also used a method of capturing tuna where they take the tuna from the drop lines of the fishermen. 
The orcas patrol near the vicinity of the boats and when they find a tuna hooked on a line, they take it before the fishermen have got it to the surface, leaving behind just the head. The fishermen are not happy about this and there have been unsubstantiated reports of the fishermen trying to drive the orcas away, throwing things at them and using devices to stun the orca with electric shocks. There has also been a report of a calf being killed in fishing gear and in the same incident the mother lost her right pectoral fin. Other orcas have also been injured in fishing gear with one male having a deep cut in his dorsal fin. The orcas risk getting so close to the fishing boats as the tuna caught on the drop line are bigger at 2 meters in length compared to those caught by actively hunting which are around 0.8 to 1.5 meters in length. This means that those orcas need fewer tuna, around 8 per day to reach their energy requirements compared to 21 to 141 tuna per day when actively hunting. With fewer tuna around it makes sense to use this novel fishing method. Research has shown that calves within the two pods that use this method are more likely to survive than calves in the other pod. A paper published in May of this year by Ruth Esteban, who has studied these orcas for over 10 years, has identified that out of the total of 31 orcas, just 9 are involved in these interactions. Two different groups of orcas have been identified. Both groups include a mother of some of the participants, but the mother has not been observed to take part. The paper states that we can only make assumptions concerning the motivations that killer whales may have to interact with a vessel. Possible explanations include an incident such as a collision with a vessel or a combination of factors such as lack of prey, boat disturbance and interaction with fisheries or it could just be natural curiosity. It is possible that other orcas will also learn this behaviour and there is concern that if the situation continues or intensifies then marine safety will be at risk and that the orcas will come to harm due to self-induced injury or from mariners protecting their boats. Whatever the reason for the orcas' behaviour towards these boats, I sincerely hope that the orcas come to no harm and that there is a way in which us humans can share the coastal waters and its resources that does not endanger this already fragile subpopulation. If you enjoyed this video, then please like, subscribe and share with your like-minded friends.